it's not looking, looking too good for the Straw Hats right now because Luffy can't even damage Saturn while all the five elders have shown up with their demon god fruit powers and in chapter 1111 we find out that each of the Gorosei have shanks levels of conqueror's hockey. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. But fear not because just as Saturn called up his homies, our Nika too awakened an ally of his from 800 years ago. The Iron Giant has joined the battle and Luffy is about to have a Megazord on his side. However, before we get to all of that, we have Saint Marcus Mars with his Itsumare demon god form bursting through the Labo phase barrier to stop Vegapunk's live stream. Now, if you're wondering how did he break through the lasers, then it's simple. The lasers <clears throat> do hurt him, but just like his buddy Saturn, Mars was able to regenerate, proving that all of the Gorosei have this ability. On the other hand, Jinbei is stunned looking up at Mars due to the immense hockey emanating from him. Look, Zoro stocks are back to normal, but the Luchi stocks that we thought had hit zero are still fighting for their life. Because bro is still standing after getting slashed by Zoro. In fact, in his wounded state, he even tries to go for one final attack, but Jinbei says hold my beer and, and just he just nudges Luchi with a little poke, causing him to finally fall. However, just as Mars arrives, Zoro and Jinbei yeet out of there because their objective right now isn't to fight, but rather to escape with Bonnie and Vegapunk. They don't even know about the Vegapunk broadcast. Mars asks Luchi the location of York and an update for everything that has gone down at Egghead. As he spills all the beans, Luchi also requests Mars to not kill his comrade, showing a different side of his that we are not accustomed to. Luchi expects the Gorosei to finish them off as they have failed to do their job of killing Vegapunk and getting rid of Straw Hats. However, in the CP9 cover story that records their journey together after they lost to the Straw Hats in Eni's lobby, it is revealed that Luchi considers his entire team as sort of a family. A completely twisted family, but a family nonetheless. They spent countless number of years going undercover as shipwrights at Water 7, and they had been together since they were orphans. For someone to be born into the Cypher Pole and become a ruthless killer at an extremely young age, Luchi never had a family or a life outside of work. And for a person as prideful as Luchi to beg for mercy regardless of his own safety just so that Kaku survives, it shows his own character development throughout the series. He has always seen the celestial dragons as the gods of the current One Piece world because as a child, that's the only thing he had been taught to believe. However, if something were to happen to Kaku, who he now considers as his brother, especially if it were to come from the government itself, Luchi's entire world will be shattered. And as expected, Mars has the same attitude as Saturn, considering all human life as insects, including the Navy team who serve directly under them. Mars responds saying he wouldn't pay attention to insects that would be stepped on. This will be the final verdict in Luchi's mind to end his loyalty towards the world government once the Neo Marines are established and perhaps he will lead the new cypher pool with a new lens. Wait, what was that? Uh, what the hell is this? Bro? It says a letter from five Anji fans. Okay, uh, look at Zoro. Uh, oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Zoro is literally getting carried IRL by Jinbei. Who does he think he is? My Valorant teammates? Oh my god. Was Zoro Foro all along? Was Luchi really that tough to beat that bro can't even walk on his own? Actually, no. Look, look, look. Okay, let me defend this. Zoro didn't overexert himself to beat Luchi. He didn't even use one of his signature King of Hell attacks. The reason Jinbei is carrying Zoro is so that he doesn't get lost. It's faster that way. Honestly, you 5 Angie fans got nothing better to do than slander others. Do you like him and don't like him? There's nothing you could do about him because he's number one. But coming back to the chapter, Dory and Bragi are finally reunited with Luffy after slashing the sandworm's head off. They have a very nostalgic reunion and ask Luffy about his appearance, which uh, Luffy has no idea what the hell they're talking about because bro is oblivious to his own power. <laughs> the Giants reveal that similar to the Buccaneers, the legend of Nika has been passed down 
down to the giants as well in Elbath. The only difference is that the buccaneers considered Nika as a warrior of freedom and liberation, while the giants considered him as a god. Moreover, Dory blows his viking horn which signals the giants that the straw hat's captain has been found and now it is time to retreat. This is interesting because how did the giants figure out where to find Luffy? Um, last time we saw them was in chapter 1069 at Elbath with, with Shanks. Oh shit. It's all coming together. So the only logical thing here is that Shanks gave Dorian Broggy the newspaper, which says that Luffy is about to get jumped. So they have come to save Sun God Nika and bring him to Elba. Because like, look, 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 look. we all know that one of the main powers of Zasnicha is getting information from all over the world. So Shanks knew a Buster call would be sent to Egghead alongside Kizaru. So he gave Dory and Broggy the newspaper, telling them that their friend is in trouble. However, this also hints at the fact that perhaps Shanks knew about Saturn being deployed to Egghead and understands that Luffy doesn't have the necessary skills to harm him. That's why the giants are here to help the Straw Hats retreat. So when Luffy reaches Elbaf, there he will learn the true secrets behind the Gorosei's powers. Another evidence to this is the giant saying that the Gorosei's demon god forms look awfully similar to the beasts of Elbaf. However, Warkiri was having none of this. He lets out an enormous roar of Conqueror's Hockey that stretches throughout the island. This is on a scale similar to Luffy versus 50,000 Fishmen. The roar is one of the strongest forms of Conqueror's Hockey that we've ever seen in the series, even in comparison to Shanks' Hockey against Green Bull. It was so strong that it not only affected the Marines who were on the outskirts of Egghead, but also Luffy. This man's roar literally snapped the wounds off of Luffy's chest, where afterwards Luffy had to put his own body back together like Legos. Warkiri then advances towards the trio, but was blocked off by the giant's defense called the Sun Shield. This defensive shield comes from the ancient Nordic mythology, which is said to have blocked the heat of the literal sun from destroying the earth. Another peculiar detail is that, you know, those circles that we see in the flag of Wano to even at the throne at Alabasta and Kuma's church. That same circular pattern is found on this shield from Nordic mythology, giving further evidence that the giants were part of the ancient kingdom and Joy Boy's cohort back in the day. Having his attack clowned on by the giants, Warkiri asks them if they know who they're defending back there, to which the giants respond saying, yeah, he's our friend. This is Nika al -Gayim. This response also shows that the reason the giants are here is not just to help Nika, but to help Luffy as well. They want to protect their friend just like Luffy protected them from Mr. Three and Little Garden a thousand chapters ago. But it's not just the giant's response that starts bringing out more questions. It's Saturn's as well, where he says it's all the more reason to finish him off, finish Luffy off, not the giants. In retrospect, we would think that the Gorosei should have the giants be eliminated for supporting Nika, but it's Nika who needs to be eliminated for having the support of the giants. And this is why you guys have the notification bell turned on and you guys use code ABD for 10% off at Gamer Subs to be extra locked in. Let me explain what I'm trying to say here. If you've watched our video covering the entire One Piece timeline, you would know that we theorized that multiple races from before the Void Century supported Joy Boy in his crusade of peace. From the Lunarians to the Buccaneers and even the Giants. The Lunarians and the Buccaneers have all but gone extinct, but the giants, similar to the people of Wano, were never touched. Wano had natural elements to protect them from invaders and the world government, but Elbaf is an entirely different story. While there are some giants who worked for the world government, such as Jaguar D. Sol, Elbaf in general was left alone. For 800 years, the world government did not touch Elbaf while other countries and islands were being taken over. This could either be that peace treaty was filled out between the king of Elbaf and the government, or that the giants were just too strong to be dealt with, or maybe even both. Remember when I said that in Elbaf, Luffy will learn how to go against the Gorosei's regeneration? Well, what if that's the reason they never touched Elbaf? The elders are afraid of a retaliation that could genuinely be a threat to them. As we know from Saturn's scar, that they can be harmed, but we don't know the trick behind it yet. But anyways, coming back to the chapter, the giants use an attack called 
Skilliage, which means to separate in Norwegian. And it completely smashes Warkibri away. Saturn retaliates by shooting black balls using his devil fruit powers, which Luffy believes to be poisonous. However, Luffy does the most ridiculous thing we have ever seen. E even more ridiculous than the goggles. My guy pulls out a tree from the ground and starts nibbing on it, and he creates an actual baseball bat. Though the tree was pulled from the island itself, Luffy spawns a literal paintbrush and a baseball helmet out of thin air. And this is some ability he learned from Zapainta himself. This 100% proves our Balls Deep theory that Luffy can create anything out of his imagination. He can literally turn the air into his weapons. Perhaps he will even be able to stretch time and bend reality itself to his liking as his final power-up. How else can he counter Blackbeard's black hole otherwise? The smoke it crack! Using his bat, Luffy snipes the balls back at the Gorosei which explodes on impact, causing confusion which allows the trio to run away. Similarly, the other half of the crew have almost reached the exit where the Vice Admirals are waiting. Oh my god, it's the Vice Admirals! I am I'm shaking right now. Wait, no, don't tell me. Oh my god, Red King and Pomsky are here? No, it's over. The One Piece is over. Next chapter, manga is done. No, anyway. Okay, seriously though, with the pacifistas taken down, the Vice Admirals were able to make it to the island and are now confronting the remainder of the Straw Hats. But do not worry because another ally has shown up. The Iron Giant in the forest has risen. This dude is massive. Even giants look tiny in front of it. But another quirk about him is that there is a massive forest fire going on with the Marines bombing it left and right. However, nothing affects him. It's possible that the giant is made up of wapple metal from way in the past, making it last this long. However, it doesn't stop there as it also seems to have a consciousness or rather a memory because bro starts yapping about Joy Boy. I am sorry, Joy Boy. These words once again send shivers down my spine. It is peak fiction. These words prove our balls deep theory that the ancient robot was part of Joy Boy's crew 800 years ago. He was also tricked by Emu similar to Zunisha into betraying Joy Boy, causing the ancient kingdom to lose. Perhaps just like the elephant was punished to roam the seas. The giant robot also had the curse to only reawaken when Nika's hockey once again was present near him. And you guys all know about how it awoken like 200 years ago because of the Tamate box steroid pills. Those were kind of like the fuel for him. So he woke up 200 years ago because of that. Honestly, I'm kind of seeing a pattern here with these guys. Like Zunisha could have been similar to Chopper and Joy Boy's crew. Someone regarded as a pet for them and the Iron Giant was their cyborg similar to Frankie. And Lily D. Nefertari was like Vivi to Joy Boy, not a part of the crew, but their friend. However, looking towards the future, the Iron Giant has awoken to help the Straw Hats leave Egghead. He will carry the ship and the crew towards Elbaf. Or, of course, the moon! Yep, we are still going there. <laughs> Don't listen to Yusuf. Shut your mouth, bro! And finally, if you wonder, won't the Gorosei chase the Straw Hats? One of them can fly, so even if they run away with the Robo Man, they can't get away. Well, it's time time for our weekly dragon update. Oh my god, not the <laughs> again, bro. It will be monkey. Stop it. Get some help. All right, if you interrupt me one more time, things aren't gonna look good for you. Oh, 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 shiver my timbers. It will be Monkey Deadbeat Dragon who will save- You know what? First, it was Yusuf interrupting me over and over again. Then Harrison betrayed me. And now even the editors. Oh my God. Ryan, Siraj, let me give the people their copium. It's a three week break, bro. How are they gonna survive? 